I thank God for his word tonight. I thank God for the blessing that you and I can have because we have, amen, the word of God in our hands. Amen. I thank God tonight. Praise God. I just don't have a word or two, but I have every word which proceeded out of the mouth of God. And I thank God, praise God, that I have ears that are open, amen, not only to hear, not only to receive, but I thank God, amen, my eyes can see, my eyes can read, and my ears tonight are open. Are your ears open? Amen. Praise God. I trust they are. Be blessed by the word of God Look for what God has in store for us. God says, I shall prepare a table. And I thank God this table is prepared for me tonight. Amen. It's prepared not only for me, it's prepared for the good of my soul. Because I'm in the house of God, I'm in the presence of God. And I didn't come into an empty old building, but I've come into God's storehouse where there is meat. And I thank God for that meat today, praise God. Amen. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away. I'm not here for temporal things. I'm not here for carnal things, but I'm here for the word of God. Amen. I'm here for what thus saith the Lord. I'm here for what shall endure. Jesus said, the word which I speak unto you, not only are they words of spirit in our life, amen, but they are words that shall endure. Heaven shall pass. The earth shall pass. Anything and everything that the word created shall pass away. But Jesus says, my word. Can someone say my word? My word. Amen. My word shall not pass. That's why I don't mind going into the Old Testament. And my Bible is open this afternoon, tonight. It's open in Habakkuk. And I want you to read along with me. Make sure you have a Bible. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. So if that's what you have, you can read with me word by word. I'm going to begin reading from Habakkuk chapter 2. I want to read the first three verses, but I want to get into verse three, especially talking about the vision which you and I need to have. Not something that comes from the headlines, not something that comes from some textbook, not something that comes from some other source, but something that comes from God. Set your affection on those things which cometh from above. Colossians and the third chapter, the second verse, amen. And I thank God my affections are set. Amen. You know what set means? Set means I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water, I shall not be moved. His branch is leaf, amen. That branch shall bring forth fruit in its season, and whatsoever I do shall prosper. That's the blessing that I have to be where I am today. And I don't plan on moving. Praise God. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. You listening to me, I trust in that you have the same vision. Listen to what the prophet says. How about cuck? Chapter 2, verse 1, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me. Amen. I'm standing, I'm waiting, I want to see, I want to hear what God will say unto me. Praise God. And what I shall answer when I am reproved. Sometimes it's not all, amen, flattering if you would. It may not all be pleasant, but thank God for the chastisement because my Bible says that my God, my Father will chastise his son because he loves that son. He loves that daughter. Praise God. Amen. So let's see what you and I have to say after we hear what God has to say. Verse 2. And the Lord answered me. Amen. I thank God. God is ready to answer you. Amen. Call unto me and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. God says, call. Amen. And he said, I will answer. So what happens first? You call. Someone say, call. Amen. Someone else say, I will call. Amen. Because God says, call and I will answer. Amen. You want an answer? Call. That's Jeremiah 33 and the third verse. And here God says, and the Lord answered because he was the man of God saying, I'm standing, I'm on that tower, I'm in the right place, I'm where I should be, and I'm waiting to see what God has to say to me. That's verse 1, if you allow me to paraphrase. Now the second verse, it says, and the Lord answered me and says, write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that read of it. For the vision is yet, verse 3, listen. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. Someone say, it shall speak. It shall speak. Amen. It shall speak and it shall not lie. Amen. I thank God today. How about God? I don't know how many years I have to go back, way back. Amen. Not all the way back. You know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's Alpha. Amen. Omega. His name is Jesus. We're somewhere in the middle. How about God? Is a little bit... A little bit before my day. But it doesn't matter how far I have to go back. Listen, 
He says, it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, he says, wait for it. Are you waiting tonight? Amen. Are you waiting for the word of God? I don't mind getting into the scriptures and finding them, turning to a different book, turning to a different chapter, reading a different verse, getting hold of a different line, a different precept, a different concept, different ordinance that belongs to me. All I have to do is wait for it. God has spoken, amen, that word. And the Bible says, surely I shall see it come to pass. So I wait. In patience possess ye your souls. That's the teachings of Jesus. Amen. So I thank God for patience. One of the fruits. Amen. I thank God for that patience to wait. Amen. And knowing that God will be there right on time. Amen. Knowing that as I wait, God is there for me. God is there for you. Because we're waiting upon the right person. God. Amen. God so loved the world that he sent. In the time of need, Jesus Christ is there for us. Amen. Wait for it. Because it will surely come. Hallelujah. Are you reading with me? Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. Wait for it. It shall surely come. It will not tarry. Prophet Habakkuk. Let's read about Prophet Daniel. And what he had to say. In chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. I'm going to read what Daniel wrote. What Daniel received in his day. I'm going to read one verse. Verse 32. Daniel chapter 11. And verse 32. Get your Bible. I want you to read with me. And don't depend on what I'm reading. Make sure I'm reading it right. Make sure I get every word. Make sure I read it the way it is written. How many times did we hear Jesus himself say, as it is written? Amen. It is written. That's New Testament speaking. That's New Testament wording. This is New Testament as it is written. Amen. So let's read it as it is written. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. False praise. Do we know what flatteries is? Do we understand that word? Something that is just used to exalt a man or a woman. Playing with their pride, if you would. And I thank God tonight what I'm reading. It's not flattery. It's word. Can someone say word? Amen. What I'm reading tonight, what's in my hands Amen. It's not tickling my ears. It's not flattering. Amen. My ego. Trying to make me feel good about myself. What I'm reading is trying to get me saved. Trying to get me sanctified. Trying to get me filled with the Holy Ghost. Trying to get me on my way to heaven. Trying to get me on a way which leads unto life. And off the way which leads unto perdition. Thank God. Amen. I'm pressed toward the mark. That prize. That high calling of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the vision that Paul had. When you read in the New Testament. And here Daniel, the second half of this verse, it says, But the people that do know their God. And this is what a little bit of emphasis before we get into the book of John. It says, The people that do know their do you know God? I'm not looking, amen. I'm not asking you to look at a picture hanging on the wall in a Catholic church or go through a book or something. We get to know God by his word. Even I get to know God by every word which is proceeded out of the mouth. Amen. I know how God acts and I know how God reacts. Amen. Because I can read it in the scriptures. I can read it in the Bible. Amen. I get to know God's personality. I know what God wants for me. I know what God has in store for me. Amen. I know my expected end because God has prepared it for me. Any weapon that is formed against me shall not prosper. These are things that I know because I read the word of God. I read, amen, what is in this Bible, what's between these two covers. Amen. Not only do I read it, not only do I accept it, not only do I place my eyes on it, not only do I hear it, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let me hear the word of God because I need faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. I need faith. Amen. Can someone say faith? faith. Amen. In this faith that we have, that you and I have today because of what thus saith the Lord, because of what is written, this faith, amen, is for you and I today because I have the mouth of God open. My ears are open. My eyes are open so I can see. My ears are open so I can hear. My heart is open so I can receive what thus saith the Lord. I don't want anything else. Amen. There's so many things I could turn to, but thank God I turn to the source, which is my source of life today. The word of God. What thus saith the Lord. Amen. And the prophet Daniel says, the people, show me the people that know God. Well, they can rattle off any kind of sports statistics. 
this guy scored so many, or this guy stopped so many goals, or this many baskets, or that many dunks, or ran so far, whatever, they can tell you numbers, and they can, they, you can turn the radio on and recite lyrics until the sun goes down. Song after song, you know all the words. When it comes time to quote John 3.16, uh, yeah, I, I, I remember that from, oh yeah, way back in Sunday school. Amen? That's what people, this is how the devil has his devices that are distracting the people. The wiles, if you want to read Ephesians chapter 6, you want to use a King James Bible word, it says the wiles of the devil, which we are supposed to quench. But people are too busy involved with the things of this world, and all of a sudden God is almost a stranger. They can use his name in vain when they hit their thumb, when something shocking happens. OMG, or oh my. It's used in vain. Thank God I can use his name. It's a holy name. My Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. This week I was amongst a bunch of sinners in a room and someone said, oh, and I said, no, he's not. He's my God. Amen. You can't say that because you don't serve him. Even some Christians were looking at me and saying, what? I said, no, a sinner doesn't get to say my God because you're not serving him. He's my God. Amen. You may find that a little hard, but look what Daniel says. He says, the people that know their God. Yeah. I'm not talking about an idol. I'm not talking about a statue. I'm not talking about a picture. I'm not talking about a bearded man hanging on a cross. Amen. We know no man no longer after the flesh in that way. That's what Paul wrote to the Corinthian church in the fifth chapter. Amen. Things have changed since Jesus ascended. Amen. God manifested himself in the flesh and he walked amongst us. But not for very long. Amen. He came unto his own and his own received them not. Amen. But I thank God today I'm receiving what God has for me. Amen. Walk amongst me. Bring me into the presence of God. Amen. Bring me into the house of God. Amen. Bring me where God is. Bring me where the people of God is. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Amen. This is what David wrote. And I thank God we can take this and we can apply it to ourselves today. Because it's the same word, it's the same spirit that dwells in me. Amen. And if that spirit, women, which raised up Christ from the dead shall dwell in you, it shall quicken your mortal bodies. Amen. I thank God today my mortal body is quickened. I have life in me and his name is Jesus. I have life in me because of these words of spirit and of life. Amen. His name again? Jesus. Since we said Jesus, let's find out what Jesus had to say. Amen. John chapter 15. Get a Bible. I want you to read with me. Get into the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Gospels. John chapter 15. Jesus said, I am the true vine. I'm beginning from verse 1. I am the true vine and my father is the husband man. Every branch in me. Someone say, in me. In me. Someone else say, in me. in me. You listening at home say, in me. This is important. We're going to read this a few times. And it's Jesus saying this. Amen. He says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Amen. So now Jesus is establishing the fact that we have got to be in him. Amen. Once we begin to write, I don't want to skip ahead too fast, but I want you to have this vision so when we get to it, you'll capture it and say, oh, okay, now I understand what you're saying. Amen? Because it's I in him and he is in me. But it starts by being in Christ. If any man be in Christ, amen, you know that scripture? He is a new creature. Amen? My sisters, you're in there too. If any man, if any woman be in Christ, I mean, you are a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away. Behold, all things. Yeah. Amen. Are you glad for all things yeah. have passed away? Those old things. Amen. All things are new because the old things have passed away. Are you in Christ? Yeah. Amen. Is Christ in you? Yeah. This is how you get to know God. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Christ in you is the hope of glory. What do you have inside of you? Amen. Now look what Jesus says. He begins to teach his disciples here. In John chapter 15, he says, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. He's talking about the husbandman. He says, My father is that husbandman. Now he's going to take away the branch that doesn't bear fruit. Where's the branch? 
Pay, pay close attention. The branch is not in the club. Come on. The branch is not in the walking down the street in darkness. Amen. The branch is not in the dance hall, not in the strip club. It says, every branch that's in me, that branch is in Christ. Not talking about the sinner down the street. Some people have been grafted in. Some people have been attached to the true vines, but they're not bearing fruit. And we're going to see what happens when you're not bearing fruit. He says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, the husbandman taketh it away. Now every branch that beareth fruit, the husbandman purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken. Who's speaking? Jesus Christ. He says, verse 3, John 15, verse 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me. There's those two words again. Someone say, in me. In who? In Christ. Abide in me and I in you. Let me go. There's the in me part. Someone say, in me. In me. Someone else say, in Christ. in Christ. Amen. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit itself except. There's a condition. Some people say, I don't read, there's no condition. God has no conditions. Well, his word is full of conditions. My church teaches me God's not conditional. Well, that tells me you don't know how to read. Because when you read the Bible, there's all kinds of ifs, all kinds of buts. Here's an exception. Amen. That we read, there's the word except the condition, except it abide in the mind. No more can ye, except, oh, well, here comes that word, comes up again. Except ye abide in me. Underline these words, in me. in me. They're not big, but they're powerful. They're positive in Christ Jesus. Amen. Maybe in this world, but we are not of this world. Because I'm in Christ. Someone say, I'm in Jesus. I'm in Christ. Verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth. Get ready to underline. In me. He that abideth in me and I in him. And the same bringeth forth much fruit. Someone say much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. Verse 6. If a man abide not in me. There's those two words again. In me. In my own. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt. Are you sure we're talking about God? Some preachers stand up between 10, or rather some preachers stand up before 10,000, 15, 20,000 people because that's your congregation. I'm not so sure if God ever made a hell. I'm not so sure if God will ever throw somebody in hell. And here we're talking about a fire and if you don't bear fruit, you're on your way to be burned. And this is the teaching of Jesus. If you don't believe me, read it for yourself. John chapter 15. It's in the New Testament. I'll give you the page number if you want. If a man or a woman abide not in me, they are cast forth as a branch that will be withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. Verse 7. If ye abide in me. Underline those two words again. John 15 verse 7. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified. Someone say glorified. God gets the glory. Amen. This is not religion. This is not a church. This is not a, some kind of a denomination down the street somewhere. This is where glory goes to God. This is where God gets the glory because of what His Son Jesus Christ came to accomplish as He walked the face of this earth. And I thank God that as we find ourselves within the center of His will, we will be glorifying God. Amen. I don't want to be all alone. Praise God. Are you with me? Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. This is not church membership tonight. And this is glorifying God. Amen. Jump down to verse 11. These things have I spoken unto you. We read that line again. Amen. The word which I have spoken unto you, we read it in verse 3. Now in verse 11, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, my commandment. 
Thank God for what he's reading. That you love one another as I have loved you. Amen. Jump down to verse 16. And I've got a few points I want to get in tonight. Read verse Read verses 1 through 18 in John 15 once this video or once this sermon or once this recording is off or over. But I want to read verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go. That ye should what? Go. Sit. Go. Do nothing. Go. Wait for someone else to do something. Jesus said, he's sending us on a mission. He says, I want you to go. Can someone say go? No. Are you going? Amen. Sometimes we say, not only the hearers, and, well, Jesus said it, not only the hearers, but the doers shall be justified. We talk about doers. Tonight I'm talking about goers, if that's a word. Excuse me if that's not correct in English to say what. He says, I want you to go. Amen. He commissioned us. Go ye into all the world and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover and I shall be with you to the end of time. This is the commission that Jesus gave his disciples. But here, amen, prior to that, he's saying, I want you to go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Amen. This is not just Sunday fruit. This is not just fruit in its season. There's no out of season with God. Well, show me that in the scriptures. Okay, I'm glad you asked. Amen. He says, I want you to go bear fruit. Now we're going to see what happens. And when it comes time to bear fruit, the word of God that we have for us, praise God. Luke chapter 13, I'm going to read three more verses. Three or four verses in Luke chapter 13, beginning with verse 6. Jesus spake also this parable. He says, A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and he found none. Luke chapter 13, verse 6. Read it with me. Now I'm going to read verse 7. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Three years. Are you glad for the long suffering of God? Are you glad for his patience? Are you glad for his mercy? Yes, Amen. Amen. I've said this before and it bears repeating. Long suffering, when the Bible talks about long suffering, it doesn't say forever suffering. Long may be long. Thank God for three years. Some of you took more than three years to get to where you're at today, but thank God for his long suffering. Amen. He says, cut it down. Why cover it in the ground? Why is it an obstruction? Why is it in the way? That's what I wrote in the margin of my text. Cumber it may be an old English term. It may be something that we don't use every day, but something that is cumbersome. It's, it's a burden. It gets in the way. Even if I go into the dictionary, in other words, it says it's an embarrassment. A lot of people are an embarrassment to the kingdom of God. They don't look like a son. They don't look the way a son should look. They don't wait. They don't look. They don't act the way a daughter should be looking. They should be acting. And God says, if you're not, if you're very, if you're, if you're producing that kind of wrong fruit by your deeds, by your actions, by what comes out of your mouth, if this is the wrong fruit, look out because the Bible says that the axe is at the root that the branches will be cut. This is God. I'm not talking about the devil. We know the devil is destructive, but this is God taking place, or rather taking care of his place. This is the husband taking care of his garden. Like I said, I'm not talking about people sitting in a club tonight. I'm talking about people that are in the vineyard of God. Amen. What happened in God's paradise, if you would, in the Garden of Eden? Amen. The husband, if you would, want to... I'll mix some Old Testament with the New Testament. The Bible says, in the cool of the evening, God came down. That's Old Testament, Genesis chapter 3. New Testament, the husbandman comes into the vineyard. Go back to Genesis chapter 3. God comes down, hey Adam, where are you? Adam's not producing fruit, he's hiding behind the branches. Amen. What happened to Adam and Eve when God discovered sin? He says, did I not tell you? 
Who told you? Amen. Look at God asking the question. If God can ask that question, so can I. Who told you you were naked? I know you were naked. I made you naked. Amen. You can't hide your nakedness from God. God says, I made, that's the way I created you. I know you're naked. What are you hiding from me for? Because of sin. Come on. Amen. Someone say amen. Because of sin. And there's God saying, who told you that? Because before you started listening to Lucifer, before you started listening to the devil, you had no idea you were naked. The way I made you. But the devil has come along and he's perverted you because you have listened to something. It's not prophecy. It's not the man of God. It's not God's word. You are listening to another voice and now you're corrupted. So now you have to leave. Amen? And you're going to be leaving not with a blessing, but you're going to be leaving with a curse. Even the ground will be cursed because of your disobedience. That's Genesis, same God, book of Luke. And he says, under the dresser of the vineyard, behold, these three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none. Cut it down. Why cover it the ground? Why is it in the way? Let's make some room for a branch that's going to bear fruit. Let's make some room for a branch that's going to be profitable unto the kingdom of God. Are you with me this afternoon? Amen. Thank God for the dresser. Pass through with patience. Verse 8, he says, and he answering, he says unto him, Lord, someone say, Lord. Lord. Lord, let it alone one more year. He says, I'm going to dig around it. I'm going to water it. Amen. I'm going to nourish it with the word of God. Amen. I'm going to give it some more preaching, some more sermons, some more love. Amen. Let me just finish reading in John 15. He says, oh, he says, this is my command. I want you to love one another. I'm going to fertilize it. King James says, I'll bring in some dung. And verse 9, he says, and if it bear fruit, well. Someone say, well. well. Are you bearing fruit tonight? Amen. Amen. Are you bearing fruit? Someone say, well. It is well with my soul. Amen. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, well, after I do everything that I can do, if there's nothing else that I can do, listen, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. What are you trying to say? What's your message? You better bear some fruit. Amen. You better be a fruit bearer. I don't know how else to say it. Amen. I trust you understand what, we're, what Jesus was getting at. I trust you understand what I am, amen, what God has laid upon my heart today because in 2020, we need to bear fruit. God needs people bearing fruit. God needs people in his garden bearing fruit. Yeah. Amen. We can't leave it up unto God. Amen. People sit there. I'm just sitting there waiting for God to do something. Yep. God hasn't taken away my cigarettes yet. <sighs> and then they puff it in my face. And I said, well, let me give you some scriptures that says, cleanse yourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. Some people say, there's a difference between the inside and the outside. Well, read what Paul wrote to the church in his day. Cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh, that's on the outside, and of the spirit, that's on the inside. Inside, outside, you're covered. It's up to you. And God says, go. Amen. Jesus is telling his disciples, go. Amen. Go do something. Psalm chapter 1 in the third verse, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. Before we, before I finish, let me read something from Joshua in the first chapter. Where he says, verse 6, he says, be strong and be of good courage. For unto this people thou shalt divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Verse 7, verse 8, listen. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Well, if God is going to do it, why do I have to be courageous? If it's up to God to do all this, then why do I have to be strong? Amen? That would have been me. But this is Joshua. Thank God for Joshua. Chapter 1 and the 7th verse. The angel says, Now I want you to be strong and be very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is in the law. What's that mean? 
That means doers of the word of God, keepers of God's commandment. Amen. Thus saith the Lord, if you're going to do what God wants you to do, you've got to be strong and you've got to be courageous. This is not for a weakling. This is not for somebody who muttered a couple of words in the back pew of a church somewhere, ashamed to stand up and confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Amen. Afraid to go public. Amen. With his belief, if you would, whether he believes, I don't know what he believes. Amen. But the church today has made a bunch of weak Christians, a bunch of Christians that don't have a backbone, a bunch of Christians that can't stand. The Bible says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That's verse 10 in Ephesians 6 before it tells us to put on the whole armor. You've got to be strong. You've got to be courageous. Because you've got to do something. Go and bear some fruit. That thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou. Are you reading with me? Wherever you go. Jesus said, go. In the New Testament, John 15. I'm reading Joshua chapter 1. God is saying, you got to go. Amen. I'm on this side of the Jordan River while the promise is on the other side. So what do I got to do? I've got to go. Amen. Put on your feet shot in the preparation of the gospel of peace. Put on your marching shoes. Amen. Put on your walking shoes. Amen. Because we've got to go. Amen. I'm on my way. Amen. We used to sing that song in church to Canaan's land. Amen. I'm on my way. Praise God. Amen. Go. God is telling us to go. I'm going to finish with this. Joshua 1 and the 8th verse. What happens when you go? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Someone say day and night. Amen. Psalm chapter 1 and the 2nd verse. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Amen. Not just Sunday. Amen. Day and night. Someone say day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Amen. Everything that is written, every word, every line, every verse, amen, every precept, what thus saith the Lord. Get a Bible and find out what it says because we've got to be doers. Amen. We've got to be keepers, not just hearers. Well, listen, it comes with a promise. And I want to leave you with this tonight. For then thou shalt make thy way. Uh, hold on. Did I read that right? It says, thou shalt make thy way. Thou shalt make. Well, I thought God was doing the making. Hold it. Here, I'm not reading it wrong. I want you to read it with me. Don't take my word for it. Joshua chapter 1 and the 8th verse. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Where's my prosperity? Well, what are you doing about it? Amen. God's looking for a doer. God's looking for a vessel that is meat to be used. Meat for the master's use. This is New Testament teaching. But people are sitting around waiting for something to fall into their laps. Oh, bless God when God blesses me first. Well, you're going to die waiting for your blessing. Even I've had people tell me this. I'm waiting for God to bless me. You're going to wait for a long time. Get up and do something. Amen. Prove God at His word. This is what the Bible says. Prove me. Speak the word. Put the word of God into action and God will honor His word. God will back it up. Amen. God says, I will not speak in vain. I have spoken my word. Surely it shall come to pass. Surely. Someone say, certainly. Surely. It's a sure thing. Speak the word of God as it is written, and God will not let you down. Let me finish. Thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. You want good success? And this is not just a 2020 message. Oh, it's 2020. The vision, whatever. People get on with all these slogans and sayings and whatever. I'm getting on with the word of God. I'm getting on with the word. Amen. With every word which proceeded out of God's mouth. You want good success? Thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. What are we going to do? Bear fruit. Someone said, what are, we gonna, what are you going to do? I'm going to ask you that question. Bear fruit. I'm going to be a fruit bearer. Amen. You better bear fruit. Praise God. That's what we should call this 
They even put a title on this teaching this afternoon. We better bear fruit. Thank God. Are you a fruit bearer? Amen. Go, Jesus said, and bear fruit. Amen. Praise God. Let's give God a good hand for his word tonight. Thank God for every word we've received upon the love of God. It is a blessing. Amen. For you and I, today, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. His name is Jesus. Praise his holy name. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God.